So what's up one and all got the best tech ascot? Nah, they used to make it in just a regular G10. And then the G10 carbon fiber layered, looking beautiful. But no, now they've gone burl. And obviously you can get burl wood from a variety of different species of trees. So which tree is this from? I don't know. I don't know what tree it's from, but it's burl wood and it looks really good. I like this one. Um, you know, I imagine every knife's going to look a little bit different because of that. I was attracted. Usually I'm not that big on wooden scales. And I always imagine everything has to go through hell and, you know, back as a knife. So G10 is my preferential. Titanium is beautiful, but it always freaks me out because snail trails and marks. Uh, but then wood just, yeah, you know, it's organic. So it can go away over time, but this will outlive me, my friend. So yeah, maybe I'll much ado about nothing. It's nice. I always worry about little cracks emanating off of where the screws went through, but this one looks fine. And it's got carbon fiber on the bolster. And you know what? That's pretty doggone seamless there. That feels pretty good. And these screws are number eights. Yes, they are all the way across. So thank God for small favors. 14C28N. Is this a good size knife? Yes, it is. And it's bigger than my hooligan. Oh, yeah, way bigger than the hooligan. And what have I got in my pocket? Got the Asticus. Of course. It's super carryable. That looks pretty close. And the Asticus is close to 9 inches overall length. So let's just pull the tape. Okay. Uh, not quite four inch blade, but three and three quarter inch cutting edge, four inch to the back there, really close to a hundred millimeters. It's there and eight and three quarter all day long over 22 coming up on 22 and a half centimeters overall length. Let's just get some of these little basics out of the way. 15.5 millimeters at six tenths of an inch so yeah that's pretty robust in the hand 0.14 come on get uh, okay we're at the top of 0 0.14 3.6 depends on how hard you want to push this 3.7 millimeter blade stock of 14 c 28 and so it's sandvik steel uh yeah it's 108 bucks okay and on white mountain knives if you get one uh, 108 then just remember to use your LTK discount code get 10% off so it'll knock you under a hundred and uh, free shipping right so there you go on that and there's your stats and that's what we just gave you so great uh, I like it I like the Ascot it's a real sensible blade. It's a great looking design. I'm attracted to the design and I'm also happy about the blade. You know, a nice flat grind. You know, and you could pierce, you could slice. Can you do anything with this? Here, come on. Let's get this paperwork back here. Okay. Yeah. And get around the south side. Oh, I was going. I just didn't want to continue. Yeah, it's it's sharp right out of the box. The handle material is attractive. Uh, you know, there's little tiny. I, I guess, you know, it's organic. So you might expect some minor imperfections. But overall... It looks pretty doggone good. We're going to take it apart. Take a look inside. And yeah, I've done a review on the regular Ascot. So this is just because of the burl. 
and the carbon fiber setup. I just think it's outstanding enough to go ahead and repeat myself to a degree. But it's not terribly billboarded up. Got their logo on this side, the type of steel on that side. It's got nice titanium surround on the pivot, both sides that matches the pocket clip. Open design, no backspacer, which it would have been nice if they would have done a carbon fiber backspacer. I really, I, I really feel like a knife that's an attractive knife and not just a work only knife ought to have some kind of a backspacer. And they do on here, you know, even the Asticus or, you know, look at the Ferrum Forge Mini Archbishop. I mean, that's nice to to give me uh, a backspacer on that. So, yeah, it'd be nice. What does this knife weigh? 4.3 ounces, 122 grams, so that's not bad at all. Ergos are great. This pass-through is easy to get to to disengage the blade. It's got a great fidget factor because it gets over the detent ball early. So you can just drop that flipper tab on your thumb and go. You've got some traction up here on top of the blade. You could sneak up for close-in work if you wanted to. Nice satin grind. The fit and finish feels good. Reverse grip is comfortable. Not a problem there. But yeah, it fits my hand. It's pretty neutral here. So from an ergo standpoint, a little bit of a palm swell here. No, I, really good here. Uh, pocket clip is what a pocket clip is, especially the milled ones. That, you know, eh, over a period of time, working with a knife, you're going to start feeling it, etc., that's just the nature of the pocket clip. Plunge looks good and symmetrical. Let's see. Blade to handle length is right there. I mean, any more, I could touch it and not quite, but so that's perfect. It's centered. No blade player lock rock, and the design flows really nice. Disappears in the bolster here as well. Uh, whether you get a burl or you get the carbon fiber G10 layered or whatever. I just think the Ascot is one of those ones that you might think about. But that is smooth. That is smooth. And you can see it's got an internal uh, stop here as we rotate it around. And you can see the stop right there. Nice heavy stainless liners. Should be able to uh, take some abuse if need be. Yeah. Where's my balance point? Okay. Nice balance to it. Feels good in the hand. Just, just a nice looking knife. And it's out on the patio. And we don't have any sunshine. So this is natural lighting. Which is kind of nice to be able to do without the glaring studio lighting that I usually use indoors and yeah I mean it's really nice all number eight screws I don't know where the screw is and the pivot is so I'm gonna tr okay this looks like it'll work right here front side coming out with the little surround ring and the pivot screw and then this, of course, for the carbon fiber on the bolster. So that ought to come off just like that. And it does. And underneath. There you go. Lay that down. Now we got the outer scale to deal with. We got plenty of screws in here, that's for sure. But uh, no issues with Loctite, you know, sticking or anything like that. There you go. And there's the underside. Nicely contoured scales. And here you go. Now you're down to just the liner. 
and I'm gonna move this out okay now we can pop it off here we go here's the liner it's skeletonized it's smooth well done here and no not ceramic bearings standard they're nice sized and it's pretty clean work up in here here's your surround on the other side looks like a one-piece pivot there's your liner on the opposite side here's your track where your stop runs and they did skeletonize a little bit over here for weight relief and there's the back side with the pocket clip and no point to tear that apart I just kind of want to look inside the pivot is d-shaped so that's good keeps it from spinning and you can see the opposite liner here has a D in it so when it comes across it'll stabilize that so I guess I came at it from the right side to begin with or the correct side to begin with so we've got a D shape we're gonna go right through that D give her the big D and plenty of lube there by God <laughs> and here we go put another bearing on top and we've got the liner it'll just fit right over all this right like that now we've got that situated let's uh, put our bolster on and then when we put the bolster on that'll allow us to put the the screw on it too for the pivot and so we've got the pivot screw with the surround here and then finally the scale fits right in and one more okay I'm not going to tighten these down way out of control but I'm going to snug them down pretty good. Okay. There you go. It's all back together. Uh, is it uh, centered? Yes, it is. And what's the action like? Did I get it too tight? I, I, it's reasonable. That's reasonable. Um, I could loosen it a little bit. It definitely responds to that that's a much quicker easier drop that's for sure and still looks centered so it gives you a little bit of adjustment room in there nice looking knife comes in a pouch in the pouch you get the card you get this that uh, the knife comes in you slide it in the pouch on the other side you have another pocket as well with a microfiber cloth so that's a nice setup uh, a lot of knives that cost a lot of money don't come in pouches so that's always an extra it's nice to have to protect it here's the outer box ascot there's the model number bg 19 d that's the box it came in I like it I really do I think it's a great little carry not that heavy uh, good materials gonna be easy to sharpen and maintain the blade it's not a super steel so it's not gonna take you three hours to sharpen of course you won't sharpen it as often if it was but I kind of like a normal user steel it's easy to just re put on the strop and just touch up after using it for three or four days and go again Best tech ascot, 
in burl and carbon fiber. And I'm going to let you go, you guys. Take care. You know what we do. We love them knives, so you guys stay sharp.